Okay, so um, I don't know, last summer, I guess, I was leaving an area, neighborhood, and some guy had a portable garage sale. I guess that's all I could call it. He had a big flatbed trailer with a bunch of stuff on it. Anyway, I picked up this little Craftsman vise for five bucks. Um, what is it, four inches? Three and a half? Um, turns out it's, it's a really solid, good little vise. It doesn't slip. It's really good, but like most of these, it's got serrated steel jaws. So, uh, you know, uh, Tom Lipton on Ox Tools has, oh, you know, he's big on uh, copper jaws. And of course, I, I've got his book, um, uh, was it Metalworking, Doing It Better? Anyway, so I finally broke down, bought a chunk of copper. So we're going to make a couple jaws for this. Um, so, easiest thing, of course, is just to duplicate the ones that are in there. Uh, this is a little bit taller than what's there. Existing jaws are just about five eighths. This is three quarter. So actually, I'm just going to let them be a little proud of this. Um, make sure this all shows up. I'll back it out a little bit. So the only thing that really matters is this, uh, you know, that we get the screws in the right place. And uh, that we use the right Looks like these are actually counterboard a little bit in addition to being countersunk. Let's take a look. Yeah, I don't know if, it's, let's see if that shows up. I'll zoom that in a little bit. Yeah. So you can see here there's a little little lip in addition to the countersink. And what we can do is just go extra deep with the countersink. That way it allows a little bit of room for wear. And uh, let's drop the screw. So that'll, we'll just do that so they sit down about, I don't know, 16th of an inch or so. Um, pretty simple. Should not take very long. Uh, not a huge amount of uh, machining on these. Basically, we'll just cut them to, cut them into bandsaw. I'll probably use the mill just to get them in the same length to make them so that they're flush with the sides here. Which is actually just a little more than three and a half. I'll measure it with the caliper and get it right. It's close to three and five eighths. I mean, actually I'll make them the same size as whatever the jaw is. So, yeah, so that's actually three and five eighths it looks like. It looks like our center to center distance is right on two and a half which would make sense. Um, it's not some goofy measurement but I will yeah that looks that looks right but we can we can actually find out uh, what we'll do Is uh, back that off a little. So what we'll do is put these screws in there. So what we can do is is just measure across the screws, which looks like uh, two and three quarters, and two seven forty two, so eight thousandths short of three quarters, close enough. And these look like quarter inch screws, so we'll just subtract that. But I'll measure it to be 100% sure. And they are, they're 230, so they're 250. Um, so that difference of 20 thousandths is almost is half of that. So, um, yeah, so anyway, that, that verifies that this is two and a half inch centers. So we'll make a just a really quick and dirty sketch, which doesn't get any quicker and dirtier than just tracing around this thing. And actually, looking at it, the holes are offset. So, and it looks like, yeah, they're offset. So we have to account for that. So these are two and a half. Our overall length is uh, three inches, six hundred thirty-one thousandths, and six twenty-five would be five eight. So we're gonna—I mean, we could duplicate that, but 
I'm guessing 625 would be close enough. Actually, the uh, movable jaw is 626. So we're going to call it that. Just make them the same. Now we got to figure out what our offset is. So we'll just take the difference between those two. And so uh, 1.136 and point, it's almost 2. Point 0.199. We get 0.199, 136, 63,000s difference. So it's offset a sixteenth of an inch. So that's fine. We'll do that. Uh, let's see, is that on the bottom or the top? So it's good to know. Yeah, actually, it's interesting. The short side was down, but it doesn't really quite line up with the hole, so there was a gap in there. You can tell by the rust, too, probably. So either way, that'll be fine. Um, so we'll do that. So let's uh, cut off a couple pieces of this. We'll cut it a, just a tiny bit long, just to uh, allow for a little cleanup. The other thing we need to worry about, which is not very often to worry, but it's worth checking is the uh, angle on these. Most are 82 degrees or 41 on a side. So we're just going to take our uh, little angle gauge and check. Set it at 41 and see if it lines up. So I don't know if that will show up or not. Let me zoom in a little bit see. Okay. Is that, you can see that or not. But See, at 41 degrees, that lines up. So that's a that's a standard 82 degree countersink. So we'll just use uh, this looks like a half inch. Yeah, close enough. 458. So these are probably half inch. Yeah. So yeah, those are those are half inch. So we'll just use a half inch countersink. Go down a little extra deep, and we should be good to go. Let me cut these off, and then we'll get going. Okay, we're over here at the mill. Um, so there's a couple, a couple little things. Uh, one, I'm going to use a high helix uh, mill, which or end mill, which will help get the chips out. Not that there's going to be a lot of them, just to face it off, but um, they work better than in soft materials. And uh, we're going to use the uh, stop pins in our vise that we made. So we'll need this sticking out a little bit. So we'll put one here to stop it. And then uh, a couple here to act as parallels, if that's not down too far. Yeah, we'll go there. Should work. Yeah, we've got enough clearance. So we'll just squish that up in there. And since we'll use this pin as a stop, um, we'll just rough one end on each side and then cut it to length and that'll give us the same on both. Just put a piece of, I'm just going to put this piece of rod in there to give it, that way it'll seat on the back jaw. So that should work. I'm not going to worry about the thickness, which is actually a little thicker than the originals. So that's fine. So we're not going to cut the height down. Just uh, Put this in there and clean the ends up. All right. All right, we'll put a little WD-40 on here because copper's kind of gooey. Just 
fine mill this and get a decent finish. Not that it matters for a vice jaw. It's going to get beat up anyway. So how are we looking here? Okay, we're clean all the way across. So we'll just knock the other one down really quick and make them, cut them to length. I did knock the saw burr off of one end of these so that they would sit well in the vise. Not even worry about tapping it down or anything because you know, just don't need to. bad. A little of that on there. Like a couple thousand says a climb pass. That should do it. Feels nice. Plenty good, plenty good for what we're going to do. Just take the burr off real quick. So we can stick it in the vise the other way. Okay. So we want 3.625. Right now, let's see how much shows up. So we're at three, almost three seven five, three seven four six. So we've got about eighty thousandths to come off, a little more, somewhere in there. Let's see, sixty five, thirty five. Yeah, about eighty thousandths. Anyway, um, so we'll just turn this around. And I, I don't know if it shows up. Let me back this up just a little. So we have enough here to, to uh, measure off of, I believe. So that we can, yeah, we got enough to measure off of. So that'll work. I'm not even going to uh, edge find this. We'll just, we know we're about 80 thousandths big, so just take a, take a pass, get a measurement, and then uh, zero off of that. Get it square first. about seven hundred and nineteen so we got to go to six twenty five got about ninety five I was off before I was about a hundred thousands anyway we'll lock that down Okay, uh, let's see. So we're 3.717. Um, I zeroed the DRO. We need 625. So that's 75 thousandths plus 17. 
So that's 80, that's 92,000 or so to go. And unfortunately, I would use the DRO and just put in the absolute measurement, except of course it's on the wrong side. It adds in. While there may be a way to invert it, I don't know what it is without looking through the manual and I'm not gonna go to that right now. So we'll just do this. And we know we gotta take off at least 75, so. We'll do that. So there's 50. That'll be 75. So we should be about 17 thousandths oversized. Quick measurement. About 16. So we're 25, we're at 641. So we need 16 thousandths. This, this is not going to be, doesn't have to be super precise. So we're just gonna go, uh, just gonna dial in 16 on the DRO, lock the table and cut it. Should be fine. Whatever it is, it's going to have to it will be whatever it is. We're going to just go with it. And we are, it's, it's looks like we're about uh, 6245, so plenty close. And this, of course, it's not a mic, but it's within a thou, almost certainly. So and what we're going to do, I'll mark, uh, I'm going to zero the DRO right here. So we can just come back to this for the other one. Take the burr off of this real quick. Bang this one down until we get to zero. It'll be pretty easy. Just gonna go about fifty thousandths on these. Except for the last pass, we'll go 10, just because we can. So we'll climb mill this one. So that's zero on our DRO. Should be good to go. We'll just drill our 
holes, countersink them. Should be done. Put them back in the vise. Yes. Take a quick measurement, see where we're at. Well, you know, if you can tell, 625 dead on, so no room to complain on that one. That one's about thousands under, so either way, plenty good. So knock the burr off. So we're going to use the same little, we're going to use our uh, indexable jaw here. They fit pretty good in there. These are the same ones I use on the lathe. I've had the jaws grown smooth. So we're going to uh, Put these in here and drill our two holes. Let's see here, about maybe there's one. Uh oh. Oh, you know what? When I there's a lesson. I haven't used this hole yet. If you saw the video of making these, which granted was horribly long, um, I milled these out after reaming these holes, but it looks like it pushed a little bit in there that uh, stopping the pin from going in. And I haven't used that hole since I made these. So, see if we can use like a, just a pin punch just to push that out of the way. Really don't want to take the jaw out and have to mess with it. Because it should just be that little edge. Should be all it takes. Nope. It's going to be a little hard to get out, but I can, that's what pliers are for. The good part is the dowel pin will force it to size, so we're just going to use the jaw real quick. Just parallel in there and just push those in a little bit. All right. So that's going to be kind of crappy to get out, but it'll be fine. So anyway, we'll uh, put these in there. I think I'll put um, one more pin right here as a stop. Yeah, you know what? I don't like that. I think I'm going to have to uh, actually get the vice stop out. As useful as this is, because I need these to be further apart than two and a half inches so I don't drill into them and they're two and three quarters which is uh, that's going to be close <clears throat> two five fifty in between them you know what that's uh, not going to do because we would drill into our pins so what we can do is offset this, drill it, flip it, and then uh, that way we won't drill into our pins. So that'll work. If I could hold on to it for more than four seconds. There we go. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, see. We'll we'll actually just index off of this end and come over because this pin is 
almost certainly in the wrong place. So this one will be all right. We'll just come over our distance. <laughs> Drop this drone down about a mile for the drill chuck. Okay. Put our chuck in. Okay, I, re I did the, you know, the math on this, so um, instead of coming off of this end, we'll just add that together. So we'll have 2.5 plus 0.5625, so that'll be 3.0625. So we'll use that as our measurement. Take the edge finder here. It'll show up. Yeah. Maybe. Probably can see the edge finder break. All right. There. We'll call that zero. This is 200,000, so we'll allow the 100 for the edge finder. Don't ever want to forget that, because it has bitten many people, including me, in the butt. So we're going to need a little more height. Okay. So, we got 2.5 plus 5625 should be 3.0625, so we'll do... Point oh six two five. Okay, so that should do it right there. So these are uh, going to be quarter inch clearance holes. So we're going to go to seventeen sixty fourth just to don't need to give them a lot of clearance. So we should be good. Oh, almost screwed up. Forgot. To Forgot the fine center in the uh, Y. So our width on here is uh, looks like 747. So what we'll do, just come down till this almost touches. We'll just use the back jaw. Kicks over right there. So we're going to allow our hundred thousandths. Okay, half of uh, half of seven forty-seven is uh, three. Shit! Hang on, I lost my my brain. Yeah. Lost my calculator too. All right, let me just double check this. Okay, uh, if our calculator will start up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0 0.747 divided by 2 is 3735. So, I already zeroed the Y. 37. Three, four, yep, close enough. But that's the center, and I forgot, almost forgot, we have an offset on this. So we need to um, offset it, actually, so what we need to do is, is rethink this for a second. Okay, I almost did something stupid there, close to it. So I almost forgot that we have an offset on this. And so we can't just divide the new one and offset it by the same amount because these are going to be taller. So we've got to try to figure out what our center is there. So we've got 280, 81, close enough, 280 plus 135. So if we take 280 divided by 2, which is half our, our so that's our radius, 140 
plus 0 0.135, that's 275 offset. So if we go, if we go 275 on the caliper, you see that lines up really nice with our offset. So we're going to do that. So we'll go, we've already zeroed our Y, but we're going to go 275 from this back edge. So we got to remember that uh, everything's relevant, ref bleh, referenced to that. So what turned out to be, what started out to be super simple turns out to be not tricky. Just got to think about it for a minute. And got to go down a little more. Show up. Okay. Sort of. Eh. There we go. Okay, so we got our uh, 1764 drill. We're running, uh, I don't know, 660 RPM. It should probably go faster, but copper tends to be gummy. There's that. What I want to do, oh, let me get in front of the camera, hang on. So we got a uh, half inch, uh, 82 degree countersink, although this one, oddly enough, is marked 41, which is, of course, half the angle, so that's fine. I'm going to seat it all the way in the chuck, and then we're going to come down and use our quill stop go down a little bit further and the knee so that we can get a repeatable depth on this so we're gonna, we're gonna go put it in back gear make sure that shows up since I dropped it so far it does I'm going to get the screw, too. Okay, we're up against our stop. So that's definitely not deep enough. So we're just going to use the knee. now. Well, there, it actually spun. All right, we're going to cheat and give this a whack with a spanner. And lots, lots more lube. Not quite so much pressure. deep enough you know what we're gonna call that good right there this is this will sit below it it doesn't have to be much below like it was before yeah I might give it a little bit more maybe uh, let's go
twenty thousandths more. Plenty good. That looks a lot more like the original. So we're good there. So we got to flip it and drill it, which as long as we just drill it right there, we can drill from the other side and we don't care about our offset. But obviously for the countersinking, we'll have to move it and get the handle. We're going to turn it over this way so that our offset is still towards the back. We don't have to reset anything. So that'll work. Center drill this. And now that the uh, countersink depth is set and our offset, I'm just going to drill all the holes and then as one step and then do the other one as a second step. drill this real quick. Let's see, it's soft copper. I probably don't even have to center drill these. Probably, we'll just try that. It should be fine. Just go in gently. Yeah, that's fine. Don't have to spot this. This in on our pins. One thing we will have to do to countersink it is now we will have to move it in the X, which is fine. So we'll drop that into back gear. We're going to cheat again and tighten up the chuck a little extra. Okay, so we're good where it is, I think. Go down till our quill stop. We should be good to go. against our stop. The hole looks just right. So that's good. 
just going to zero the uh, X and go 2.5 which is there it should line us up just right with this and it does Make sure it's still on camera. It is. Yeah. We're oh, good. there. No sense in rushing this. Okay, we're against our stop. That looks good. So there's one. All we got to do is countersink this other hole, which is already going to be in the right place. Might be able to run this faster, but as you saw, it already wants to grab. That copper is pretty gummy, and this is a five flute countersink, so there's quite a bit of cutting edge. But the nice thing is, this countersink just doesn't chatter. It is my favorite one. The flutes tend to load up a little bit, but I'll trade that for lack of chattering. All right, we're getting there. We're just about there. Yep. We're up against the stop. So we're good. That should do it. Knock the burrs off. Wipe off the WD-40. And uh, we'll see if they fit on the vice. So there's our, our set. I'm going to go this way. Of course, I want to go that way. Should be good to go. I'll move the camera. We'll have a try. Okay, so we're back here at our, our vice. Have not tried to fit these yet. Here's what they uh, came out like. It looks, you know, fine. I took a random file across here just to knock the raised edges off. Cleaned up the back. Threw it on the floor. Nicely done. So there's a little rust on there. Let me. Not that it's going to matter, but Hit it with the file a little file. Hit it with the wire brush a few a few strokes. There, it's better. So with any luck, the screws will line up with our holes. And at least they're good in that direction. We're good. So I think we're all right. Oh 
yeah that'll work nicely so now we can do jobs that uh, require soft jaws and they're still plenty good for most uses so pretty rare that I'm gonna need the stiff ones in there and I've been using these stupid pieces of aluminum angle for years which while they work are a uh, huge pain in the butt so we'll uh, we'll clean this one up take it apart clean it up all right that'll do we'll put uh, put our jaw on I of course made a stupid assumption that they were the same but it's a pretty safe bet So hole will go in. There we go. These do not have to be eight tight like the last ones were. Just good and snug is plenty. Because there's pressure on them. It's not like they're being pulled on. All right. That'll do. Our copper soft jaws. Let's see how good they line up. Of course, they should line up perfect, except for the vices. A little cocked. Oh, there we go. That'll do. So they were proud about uh, a little more than an eighth, less than three sixteenths. No, nope, exactly an eighth. So they're an eighth inch proud of the vice. That's fine. Gives us plenty to knock off. Oh, whack my knuckle. And of course the nice thing is is it, it won't won't damage whatever you put in there. Given that I would never have done that with these. So we'll keep the steel ones, but the chances of these coming out are pretty low. Anyway, um, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I know it's been really slow lately. Uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff in the home changing right now. So uh, I've been, uh, I just haven't had a lot of time to come out in the shop. A lot of side, a lot of side work, and uh, personal challenges. Uh, just, in any case, uh, again, thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, and I'll try to get more out as soon as I can.